Be here now. Just be here now. Hey everyone, it's Raghu and I'm back with Mind Rolling. I'm going to introduce uh, this podcast uh, in a minute. I just wanted to mention that uh, we have this 21-day e-course uh, that is uh, honoring and further celebrating the 50th anniversary of Be Here Now. So if you remember and Be Here Now, those most of you I think have taken a gander at it. Uh, toward The third section is around a cookbook for a sacred life, I think it was called. And uh, so every day you'll get a wonderful uh, composite of different things. You get uh, some uh, files of Ramdas audio around the particular practice of the day and these practices from meditation to breath to uh, mantra, even food proper relationship with eating and so on. Very important. Ram Dass, uh, really talked a lot about that in the early days. And um, so this is a way to really hone some of the practices that we have been doing and in some cases maybe some practices that uh, you haven't considered. So it's a, a wonderful course uh, and... Uh, there is no impediment around money. We do, uh, from my hat on Love Serve Remember here, um, suggest a donation, but if you can't make it, it's okay. It's okay. So check it out, ramdas.org slash practice, okay? Just go over there and uh, you got to do it quickly because there's only a couple of days left uh, uh, from the point you're hearing this podcast to uh, sign up. So there you go. Um, yeah, this year has been a big year. We did that wonderful course in the summer, an eight-week course around the life and teachings of Ram Dass and the practice of Be Here Now. Uh, so, uh, uh, and a little bit later in October, uh, we will have uh, a grand, the grand celebration, as they say, uh, from where I'm from in Quebec. Uh, which will be at the Wisdom Theater in Los Angeles. Actually, since I'm talking about it, which I wasn't planning on it, but October 24th, and I can't give you an, a URL. It's probably going to be ramdas.org slash wisdom, and you'll find out uh, Krishna Das is going to be there, and Jack and Trudy are going to uh, talk about the relationship with Ramdas and the core teachings that he represented over all these years. And I'll be there with Pete Holmes and uh, Mirabai Star, and Rachel's going to join us. Uh, and I'm probably, uh, and Krishnas is going to do a workshop. But in the evening, he's going to headline a concert. It's two separate events, one during the day and one in the evening. And John Forte will be there, East Forest, Justin Beretta, Nina Rao. It's going to be quite, uh, quite a day. And uh, just keep an eye out. If you aren't, um, if you haven't put your, email address into the ramdas.org mailing list. Just go up there and do it because you'll get uh, a notice about this. So this podcast, uh, which we're going to hear now, was done, I did it a little bit ago with, uh, and it uh, it's with a wonderful, wonderful teacher, Mingjur Rinpoche, M-I-N-G-Y-U-R, Mingjur, who's been on the podcast before. We actually... Also, in the guest podcast, you can hear a lecture or two of his, talk of his. And it's funny because he, he said, sure, I'll do it. Uh, and it ended up being the night before. He was in Kathmandu, and it was, you know, in the evening, 8, 9 o'clock because of the time difference here. And he agreed to do it, and he was going to about to do the next day he, uh, a, a three-day retreat. So he was uh, really kind to do this, and I invited Krishna Das to join me. We did it together with him a, a year and a half ago, I believe. We did another um, a, a podcast where he described that incredible journey he took for four and a half years 
outside his monastery and just becoming a sadhu and a wandering monk. Uh, nobody knew who he was through India, and he got very sick, and he actually had an NDE, and he talks about that a little bit in the uh, in this podcast. But he is just... And watch it on YouTube. Aside from... Yeah, if you're in... I mean, it's fantastic any which way, but if you um, watch it on YouTube, just the... <laughs> The shining love and awareness in this man is extraordinary. And he is so at ease. May we all aspire to become as at ease as Mingyu Rinpoche. And uh, I, uh, I feel so fortunate to uh, be able to spend that time with him, uh, both of us, Krishnadasa and I. And... Uh, it doesn't get any better. It really doesn't get any better. So uh, I just wanted to, to mention that uh, uh, Mingju Rinpoche uh, also, and there'll be links that you can go to because he does a lot of online things these days and you can join. I actually joined that um, particular retreat that he had. It was a couple of weeks ago over a weekend, and uh, it was just marvelous, just so marvelous, uh, so much great information, and just so much great just hanging out with him. And then all the, there was a and a at the end of the sessions that he would do. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a real fanboy here. Um, and uh, so the, my favorite thing in life is to turn people on to things that I love, especially around the past spiritual path. So here it is, Mingju Rinpoche on Mind Rolling with myself and Krishna Das. Enjoy. Great to have you here, Rinpoche. So delighted to, Thank to you. be on uh, our Be Here Now is the name of the, the podcast network that we are on. That's, of course, from Ram Das. And uh, yes. I, I, I'm going to take the first turn here to ask you um, something that I, I was wondering about. When we uh, last did this podcast, it was maybe two years, a little bit more than two years ago. And I guess it was not long before that that you had come back from the journey that you took as a sadhu through India and left your monastery. Mm. Now you are fully back, taking care of all the monasteries, doing all of the requirements for you, and uh, really back in, in, in the world. How is that, uh, how, how is that you've navigated that from that one few years of your life and then going back to, to this very, very busy life? How has that been for you? Um, <clears throat> normally I'm saying that the first day I came to Bodh Gaya, my monastery, from the, the retreat, wandering retreat. And I, first, first of all, people not recognize me at the beginning. No. Uh, because <laughs> Bodh, Gaya, Bodh Gaya was the, the school. So m most of the Monks are new. They all look at who this beer guy, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there's also security, security guard. Before there wasn't, but now they have security guard. And they're also looking, watching at me. And when I walk and that follows me. <laughs> 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 and finally, one of the head of the school, the monk here, recognized me. And found room, my room key and I went to my room and relaxed. And I thought, okay, now I'm going to look at in my backpack. So when I try to look, there's four hands around my backpack. Oh, what happened? And they all want to help me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So normally, normally only two hands around my like, and now extra four hands. <laughs> <laughs> so at the yeah. beginning, it's quite, quite not so easy to 
I mean, adjust the time and I have to follow now schedules and then the, all this. Before I was totally, mm, completely my own. But I feel very happy to be back also. So normally for my life, I dedicate my life for two things, two purposes. One, uh, retreat as much as I can, practice. Second, teaching the meditation. So my main focus is the teaching. So since I come back, I'm doing that. Retreats, not so much you know, one month here and there, but the teaching a lot. Mm. So it's been seamless for you, basically. Going from sadhu yes. back to teacher and uh, yeah, uh, going do you, do you think, from the uh, sorry no. from the no schedule from the no schedule to schedule it was quite difficult. <laughs> really, yeah. I I know that you came back just after the earthquake in Nepal. Would yes, you, but do you think you would have stayed longer if, if there had not been an earthquake at that time? Yeah, I think probably my. Yeah. My plan was three to ten years. Oh, so, I didn't know so. that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was worried it was three years and you weren't back yet. You were going to stay ten. <laughs> Minimum three and then ten and see, see, see on my mood. Oh, but wow. then I see the, I hear a lot of earthquake and a lot of people in my monastery, student, family. Or a lot of suffering. So four and a half years come back. Mm, yeah. And everybody happy about that, that's for sure. Um, in the, so just yeah. going through some of some of your writing and so on, and uh, one one thing struck me, and I think it would be really great to, for you to talk about to, to the audience, um, and it's uh, it's around you noticing as you taught around the world how people like us living in comfortable cultures and materially comfortable and uh, you said their eyes always betrayed a sense of dissatisfaction and even desperation and the questions people ask you uh, during both public and private talks often seem to revolve around how to become better or stronger than they were or how to get over quote unquote self-hatred and that is endemic in the West and, and in this culture particularly, and I think you saw that. Can you talk about that and, and, and talk about how people might uh, get uh, some understanding about how to transform that? Yeah. Um, I think the one important kind of like, uh, maybe this is in the culture, embedded in the culture. So I, I was born in Nepal. Uh, it's uh, the border between Tibet and Nepal, actually, right next to the border of the Tibet. And all the people in my village are kind of like, they speak Tibetan language, their culture is like Tibetan, and the spiritual practice also Tibetan Buddhism. So. In Tibetan Buddhism, we really emphasize about what we call uh, the, the original purity, kada, kada meaning the original purity, sometimes what we call Buddha nature, the Shik Nyingbu, or basic innate goodness, the enlightened nature. So when I was young, my mother, uh, when I did something wrong, normally she's very kind. But uh, when I do something wrong and she scold me, but when she scold me, she will not say you bad, you know, she will say this action is not good. Mm -hmm. And I don't like you do like that way. So focus more about what you do rather than who you are. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So basic le level, we believe that everybody has this wonderful nature. So I think this is, um, from different, different aspects in the West, sometimes we believe that our, there's something uh, from the deeper level, there's something is not pure. 
So normally I'm really emphasized about uh, remind everybody that we all have wonderful nature. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what kind of culture, background, and spiritual background, female, male, different color. It doesn't matter. So I think this is really important to remind ourselves that we have this wonderful nature. Mm. Yeah. I, I heard a story once that uh, some Christian uh, priests went to see His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and mm. they asked him, Your Holiness, what do you think about sin? And he was quiet for a minute, and then he just said, it's kind of a Christian thing, isn't it? <laughs> the, the idea of uh, original sin just doesn't exist in Eastern cultures, you know, of, that you're originally not good. That, that doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, very hard for Westerners to... Very uh, difficult. To, to get, release the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves. That are so critical right. and and painful, right, right. I think if we try to um, separate me and my, I think that really helps. My fundamental nature, mm. or my father. You know, when I was young, my father teaching me about the, my panic attacks. So I have this panic attacks and I'm not so happy. And my father said, the panic is like cloud or storm, thunderstorm or snowstorm in the sky. And your true nature, the fundamental nature, the awareness, love and compassion, wisdom, three, uh, in three together is our true nature. And that is like sky. So sky is always present, pure, no matter how much the cloud or storm comes. Storm cannot change the sky. Mm. So that really helps me. Mm. You, you've, all, you've also talked in the book, I thought this was really a great way to put it. There, you talked about Buddha nature blockers, right? In, in one of the books, the early, I think the earliest book that you put together. What are the Buddha book, nature yes. yeah, blockers? <laughs> so normally what we call this five blockers. <laughs> five. Blocker meaning, <laughs> blocker meaning obscuration. <clears throat> mm. So first is uh, putting self down. Mm. Um, it's like um, I don't have capacity, I don't have a worthy or I cannot, I, I don't have that capacity to be enlightened or whatever we do. Actually, we have wonderful quality within ourselves, potential. We have almost like immeasurable potentials, but we, we are limiting ourselves. So, so that's the one. And second, putting, ours, putting others down. Mm. So we are thinking others also same as us. They don't have good nature. Mm. And then third is the self-clinging. So me become very narrow, one, and uh, very tight. And then and then the, uh, creating stories about what we call aversion and craving, exaggerate, which we don't have. And then another thing is denial that we already have. So, bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> what What do you mean about but, the, Yeah. Sorry. But even though what we call this blocker, but actually it's not blocker of the Buddha nature because when we really look at these look like this block, but the essence of this block is wisdom. It is love and compassion. It is awareness. 
So in a way, the, there's no obstacle or no, there's no block for the Buddha nature. Sorry, did you say anything? Oh, did no, you no. Did you say something? Yeah, no, I was just thinking about that uh, denial and uh, maybe not fully understanding yeah. what we're denying. So denial meaning, let's say if I have 10 qualities within us, sorry, yeah, 10 qualities, one positive, nine positive, one negative. And normally we don't look at the nine positive within us. Yeah. We deny those. Mm -hmm. And the other is exaggerated, meaning the one negative, we exaggerate. We make it as 90%. So denial and exaggerate. Mm. I get it. Mm. And uh, actually, and, and <clears throat> actually, we have a lot of good qualities, like uh, ten qualities, nine is positive, and one is negative, but we don't see normally. I don't know why. I mean, I've been thinking that in the West we have much more of a, we move much more towards, as you say, pronouncing the negative rather than the positive. We seem to have a penchant for doing that to ourselves in the West. I don't know if it's in the West. I mean, is, this is a human quality, right? Yeah. I think special now with the 21st century, with the modern era, I think more people feel like there's a loss of steam because there's a lot of competitions, you know. We have a lot of competing with our colleagues, neighbors, friends, families, big companies, whatever. So then we compare with them and we always think, I'm not enough, I'm not good that. So I think that is also a big contribution. these stories that we tell ourselves, how do we, uh, how do we move out of them? And how, uh, this is a common theme for many, many, many people uh, in, in terms of, of believing these stories and not being able to move from them because they become so habitual. How do we, how do people move from these stories and these beliefs? In the uh, Buddha Dharma, so what we call, we have this foundation practice and main practice. So foundation practice, the first step of foundation practice is what we call appreciating about the human life. So really important to appreciate gratitude just having senses, uh, being as human, alive. Um, you have friends or family. So this appreciation, I think really gratitude and appreciation really helps. Mm. And then of course, the, the key solution or the real, the essence is uh, if we um, recognize the problem is solution. So even we have this self, um, self hatred or loss of steam, but that thought or that emotion, that belief of loss of steam, the essence of that is, is awareness. Mm. So, so then that very thought look like obstacle, look like problem. Actually, it is solution. So what we call self antidote, self liberation. So I think that's really important. Otherwise, if we think there's something bad with me and I'm look for solution out there, it's temporary solution. Of course, it helps. For the bad thought, we should have good thought. For the bad belief, we should have good belief. So if you fight with that, 
it helps, but it's a temporary dissolution, I think. Mm-hmm. Thoughts, Krishna Das? I was just remembering <clears throat> uh, in India in the old days when Ramdas and I and others were with our Guru Nimkaroli Baba, Ramdas got very upset. He was very angry. And uh, he came to Maharaj and he said, Maharaji, uh, Ramda, Maharaji said to him, something wrong? And, and he was furious. And he, he said, I'm angry at the impurity in myself and others, he said. So Maharaji kind of looked at him. He went and he said, I don't see any impurity. He actually had him stand up and turn around. I remember that moment. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was a very powerful thing for Ramdas because Maharaji said, "Ramdas, love everyone and tell the truth." So Ramdas said, "The truth is, I don't love everyone." <laughs> and then, then Maharaji said, "Ramdas, love everyone and tell the truth." So Ramdas recognized that he had to give up. He had to surrender. And he had to let go of that anger. And it, it took him almost his whole life. He worked on that. And um, the last 20 years of his life, while he was in a wheelchair from the terrible stroke that he had, he overcame pride. He overcame anger. He, he just he used that situation to overcome the things that he had, couldn't really get to before. He was too busy being himself, you know, but once he was in the wheelchair and couldn't do anything for himself, he really had to, really had to practice deeply. And he, he, it was extraordinary. And finally he could, he could say that he loved everyone. It was very beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So I think um, my three-year retreat teacher, I, I did three-year retreat when I was 13 years old. And inside retreat sometime, Those days, the, everything is so simple and basic. We have problem with elect, electricity. Sometimes there's no water for two or three days because the pipe will broke. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of problems. So all the retreatants are very upset and feel really not happy about what happened. And then... The Sajjir Rinpoche said, oh, you should practice compassion. You know, we asked the local tech, uh, technicians and they said, they will come. Oh, <laughs> one hour, one hour. So one hour become two or three days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then one of the, my colleague uh, asked to Sajjir Rinpoche, I'm very angry at them now. What should I do? <laughs> he said, practice love and compassion. And the, my colleague said, mm-hmm. at this moment, I'm like boiling like, fa- like <laughs> hot water. How I can practice love and compassion? I cannot even think of it. Mm. And the, my teacher said, actually, that feeling when we re- really look at the nature of that feeling, the, the, the essence of that feeling, that feeling comes looking for happiness, nice, good, benefit, meaning. So, of course, on the service level, it has become anger, but the deeper level, we just, everybody, want to help each other. Everybody look, they want to have water for themselves. Nothing wrong. 
They want to help have water for others. So just cheaper levels looking for happiness. So what we call love and compassion is looking for happiness, looking for uh, something virtue, nice, meaningful. Compassion, special compassion is don't want to have problem, don't want to have obstacle, don't want to have suffering. Maybe yeah. some people watching this video, why you are watching this video looking for happiness? I don't know how much you get happiness from here, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you come here to look for happiness. And while you are here, every breath, every eyes blink, also looking for happiness. So therefore, the basic essence of love and compassion with us all the time. So my, my, mm. when I received this instruction, my colleague from Sajir Rinpoche, it really helps him a lot. Actually, in the end, he felt like the compassion become love and compassion in the end. And the burning one dissolves. And the deeper level, there is love. Mm. And yeah. so part, part of that is the, is the basic motivation for other people, the loving kindness for other people to be well, to be happy. That compassion uh, arises from that uh, desire as, as well. Is that true? Yes. So you... Happiness to you is self-love. Happiness to others, love for others. So looking, wishing to have that motivation is always within us. But then that filtered by ignorance, don't know the real situation. So clashes then become hated. But the we can go deeper, deeper into the hated. Just basically, just look for happiness. Don't want to suffer. That's all. And that is the love and compassion. So that is the really important, like my meditation lineage, what we call basic innit goodness. So basic innit goodness has three components. One is awareness. One is love and compassion. One is wisdom. And these three are one. And with us all the time. So therefore, we have wonderful nature. Our fundamental nature is good. And that is what we call the original purity, kata. And that is what we call the Buddha nature, the enlightened nature. I think that uh, another thing that I picked up um, from, from books of yours um, that r rang a bell for me is uh, you say you talk about inside job. I think you like that. You you found that uh, <laughs> Western aphorism uh, that letting ourselves be controlled by our mental afflictions is a quote unquote inside job. You want to talk about that because that's when that happens and that happens so frequently for for so many then it's difficult to go deep, as you say, down in to find that loving, compassionate uh, being inside us. So um, being controlled by these mental afflictions as an inside job, maybe talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think <clears throat> normally what I said if there's a lamp and the, that lamp covered by a glass and that glass has a lot of scary image, maybe um, a tiger, lepers, um, snakes, uh, monsters, ghosts. <laughs> so then what happened? the room, our room, will have full of those scary images. And problem is if we don't know, these are just image come from that glass. If you think these are real, if you think there is a real snake, then there's a problem. 
But actually, all these images come from the lamp. Without lamp, there will be no scary image. But the scary image is filtered by the glass. So that filter is what we call the, um, the inside job, which is um, really internal. And then this is a, <coughs> we are clinging on that. We are holding on that and we don't see that is the, coming from the light. And we don't see all these images, it's just image. So if you wear the yellow glass, and then when you look, everything we see yellow. And if we wear blue glass, everything is blue. So therefore, in my tradition of meditation, first important is to introduce what we call introduce awareness. Introduce innate love and compassion. Introduce wisdom. So, problem for us is these innate qualities are too close to us, very near. Sometime too close, cannot see it. And too easy, actually, we don't believe. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> Rinpoche, what, what, what determines when somebody uh, becomes aware of or recognizes that there really is something in there that they could find that's good? I mean, mo most people spend their whole life in daydreams and, and then they die without ever waking up for a moment. What determines that moment where somebody will recognize that something can be done about this? I think, of course, it's not magic. Uh, one, certainly we can recognize it. it takes some time, has to have some step-by-step -step process. But um, like now, we can see, right? So actually this seeing is through coming from awareness. Of course, we have to have eyes, mm -hmm. but without awareness cannot see and cannot hear. And at the same time, there is some kind of feeling there, motivation. Seeing this with looking for happiness, don't want to suffer. So that is the compassion, love and compassion. And seeing as it is, is the wisdom, whatever the reality is. So these are with us in everyday life, with our thought, with our emotion, with our feeling, with our movement, seeing, hearing, smell, taste, sensation, always there. So I think we need to, Recognize, be with that, be with that, be with that. So, aha, after a certain level, I hear this word before, 100 times, but now, yes, there is, the wisdom is just there. Why I look out there? So sometimes people wear the glass here, you know, on the top of the head, and we look for a glass. Where is my glass here today? <laughs> but glass is just here. Yeah. Something like that, no? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, I think we, we, we certainly have to maybe talk a little bit about or, and get your feedback around what's going on, of course, with this pandemic and around the world. And here uh, in the U.S., it's, it's again rising rapidly because of the, the Delta uh, variant. And people are so, have spent a year and a half in 
many of them, many of us in isolation and so on. It's been very difficult for people. And now, of course, there's no putting the genie back in the bottle. People are out and, and this thing is spreading as a result of that. It's uh, very, very tough times. Um, and I, I notice one thing you, talk, you have talked about is empathy and uh, relating the situations, um, you call it lonely separateness, a sense of independent being that obscures our connectedness to others. And this gets, to me, magnified so much by what's happened in the last year and a half. Maybe uh, talk about the, the, the reality of, uh, I guess, engendering empathetic view so that there is not this feeling of of completely of alienation. Alienation is so so rampant right now, and, and I think it, you know it's causing other polarization between political groups, social groups, and conspiracy conspiracy theories, and so on. Yeah, I think the. in the what uh, I have one friend so he uh, is feeling deeper level there's some kind of like lonely um, little bit of incomplete looking for something more, but their sense of not enough and sometimes feeling a little bit um, uh, insecurity, something like that. And then he thought, he was young that time, and he thought because he is not become 18 years old. So if I become 18 years old, I will not have that feeling. So then one day he's become 18 years old and uh, did a birthday party, very happy. So from today on, I'm free, quite happy. Finish party, come back in the room alone again, <laughs> mm -hmm. feeling still there. And he thought, he, he was thinking, what's wrong with me? Ah, because I don't have a job. And he looked for a job. But then again, there's feeling come back after a few days. Then he thought, oh, he don't have promotion. He got promotion, he's become CEO. He was in the <clears throat> uh, New York City with the big office on the high floor and can see Center Park. Mm. But then he still didn't find the solution. Still, still something hollow although he's become a very successful person. And one day looking at the center park and smoking, you know, why I'm still this hollow is there. And someone knocked the door and opened. And that was the board of director. And they said, thank you for you to serving our company. Now we will give you retirement. <laughs> Now it's time for retirement, but still not find the, wow. the real, real answer. So then he thought, now I will look different ways. Maybe they might have some alternative solutions. So he went to the bookstore, bought a book. And that book is about the Four Noble Truth. The first, the first teaching, when you look at the first page, and in the that book says, life is suffering. What? <laughs> <laughs> he was quite happy to hear that. <laughs> so before that, he thought, I'm alone, something wrong with me, and everyone else is okay. But actually, it's okay, life is suffering. So he began to feel something warm, life suffering is okay, okay to be me, okay to have, not okay. Not okay, it's okay. <laughs> so, so I think that really helps for, for his life. So now, of course, 
we we all have this feeling normally what we call this is uh, what buddha said is suffering so buddha has this question also now buddha was a um, prince and he has wonderful life everything you know he is not worry about his uh, food or wealth or power and he has a wonderful uh, father and um, stepmother but he has this question deeper level there's something missing lonely something more insecurity why is that and actually that feeling lead to him to look for the solution and actually he got the answer after many years of practice the answer is actually everything is here within us so no need to look anything out there and of course now as you said because of the pandemic and when we look the something out there and we have to do some kind of like social distance then out there is not so available for us right <laughs> no. mm. and then it becomes stronger and stronger manifest and we look out there cannot find it but actually for me for this um, almost two years now pandemic actually helped me a lot to learn i doing i did my practice meditation and also many more than 20 years i haven't looked at the my like what we call there's a particular text five main texts about the what we call wisdom um the view ethic mind training love and compassion and um critical thinking logic hmm. five texts we have and i haven't looked at this for five year sorry 20 years hmm. now i look all this again and found a lot of interesting things now i'm writing the meditation about these books already process to put together the abhidharma mm. i think this abhidharma meditation will be very relevant for now in the modern time mm. Mm. and <clears throat> and i did a lot of lot of physical exercise uh we grow vegetable mm. in front of my house i have the vegetable garden <laughs> mm. <laughs> me and my mom we we make the garden together aha <laughs> how about you you too what did you did during the this uh, you know i i've been traveling and singing with people for 25 years full time <laughs> and I am so happy to be home and not have to go it's for me it's a lot to go from one room to the other you know I <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've really been very grateful for this time to uh I feel like so much stuff that I picked up like crust and walls around my are, are kind of finally melting a little bit as I slow down inside And of course I've taken already two of your courses this this year I'm tomorrow I'm going to see you again. <laughs> so being oh. home is so wonderful to have so much available online actually where if I was traveling I would never have time to do these things. Right. So for for me it's been a great blessing. Thank you. So is the different way to look at it. one way is uh, alone become loneliness one way alone become solitary like a uh, kind of retreat Isn't yeah it? like a retreat yeah. yeah 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 and that's that's the way it's been for for most people and of course having that view rather than woe is me i'm alone and i have no one to relate with uh, this is uh, i think one of the things you just mentioned was view right 
uh, proper yes. view, I think very, very important uh, in all of this. Um, yeah, we, we, I've been here with uh, a small group of people actually over the pandemic in a little bubble here in California in Ojai. Uh, and it's the just wonderful grace that we, we were able to be in this bubble and being able to do the work we're doing. They, they work for the foundation, Ram Dass's foundation, yeah. Love, Serve, Remember. And uh, so, yeah, it's been very graceful for us. But And we have a beautiful outdoor space, so people have been able to come and especially now mm -hmm. that are the people that are vaccinated. So, uh, yeah, it's been very graceful for us. And, and um, I feel pretty, uh, pretty happy that we were given this, actually, to be able to, to go through this. Yeah. So it's been very fortunate. Um, yeah. another, another thing that you, you have these great terms, Rinpoche, I, I just love them. And uh, they strike a whole chord. One of uh, this one in particular um, uh, is called singularity, and it fits with what we were just talking about. Um, uh, and and you have a quote from Gampopa from the Jewel Ornament of Liberation: uh, "Each moment is similar, and because of the similarity, we are deluded." Can you talk about that? That that's a, a powerful statement, and and of course you're talking about the delusion of of, of, per, of permanence, basically. But yeah. I think that's part and parcel to what's going on right now, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we have what we call the self clinging. So self clinging. How we how we grasp on ourselves is singularity, me as single unity. Mm. Mm. Actually, me has so many different parts. Me, according to my teacher, I'm student. According to my student, I'm teacher. And in home, I'm different. Or outside is different. Or I wrote a book, I'm writer. So, so many different aspect so these different labels it's become me and even this body there's uh, organs colors and speech and my mind the consciousness my belief my name Minjirumbaji, all this has so many different pieces and normally we don't see all these connections what we call independent. We just think single, me, manger, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then singularity special, the feeling of singularity has um, some kind of self-image. People think I know better. My way is better. Like there's sci some scientist research saying that taxi divers, and they ask the taxi divers, how, how about your diving skill? How many? I forget now. 70% of the taxi divers said their diving skill is above average. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a singularity that I'm best, I'm number one, some kind of like that kind of image there. Like for example, if you are together with the, your friend and driving somewhere, maybe the narrow road or bumpy road, you know, if the almost get accident, normal, what we think? If I drive, will be better, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> or if my country and Another country has competition about, uh, um, I don't know, soccer or the football. And normally, my favorite team or my favorite band, what do you call it? Band? Not band. Football band? Team. Team. Team, yes. Team, team, yes. My, my favorite team. If my favorite team wins, we think, of course, 
<laughs> but if my favorite team lose, we think, what happened? Maybe someone trick, or maybe judge is not good. <laughs> maybe that day weather is something, you know, something wrong with the weather. <laughs> so that is what we call singularity, the, the notion of singularity. And then singularity is not just one. Together with that, there's what we call notion of permanent, which is, um, if we ask other people, did you eat yesterday? And we all say, yes, of course. But actually yesterday me and today me is completely different. It's changed, everything's changed. But the similarity, similar shape, similar color, similar name, then we think still me, like there's a there's famous phrase, what do you call? You cannot cross one river twice. I forgot that one. Mm, no. uh, cannot cross same river twice, uh. isn't it? Yeah, so why? Because when you, try to cross the river, each step is new, new water. River is the mm -hmm. is water. So Flowing. once you cross, yes, one is just the other side of the river, no more old same water anymore. And when you come back, it's new water. But the similarity, the mm. similar environment, similar place, maybe similar shape, so this is what we uh, think is same. Mm, mm. So me, I learned A, B, C when I was young. So we think same thing. The, the me who learned A, B, C and now is same thing. But it's not same. So this is, uh, we hold like that, the permanent. And that is become strong, then we don't like unexpected surprise. We mm -hmm. always want to have continuity, mm -hmm. uh, consistency, the, the permanent. And unexpected surprise, then big stuff, big, big shock or stuff. And unhappiness will come. So singularity, me, and permanent cannot open our mind. There's no flexibility, openness, acceptance, tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that's, that's, that's something that uh, someone can experience directly themselves uh, through practice? Yes. We, I mean, the, we all are experiencing that. And that is not the healthy, actually. Huh. The sing singularity, I'm the best, or my way is the best. And permanent, we think everything same. We, we don't like unexpected surprise. We don't accept impermanent. Mm. We're holding on permanent. Right. And then there's a number three, what we call independent. Independent meaning we want to control everything, everything under my hand. Everything has to be my way. So these three together is the, what we call unhealthy sense of self. So that mm -hmm. is the ego clinging or self-centric. Mm -hmm. And not healthy. And from that, you, we become very touchy, emotional, easy to upset. And then, mm -hmm. Might, might cause depression or loss of steam sometime, panic, stress, all these things comes. But then when we look at this notion, this feeling, actually me is a lot of pieces, multiplicity, not single. Mm. And these pieces are connect each other, interdependent. And they're changing and changing, changing. And that is the wisdom. So that me as independent me, multiplicity me, or me is changing, is what we call healthy sense of self. It's healthy. That kind of me is good. 
But then third me, the last me, me beyond me, or luminous me. <laughs> and that is our true nature, beyond concept. Self beyond concept. Mm. Mm. Krishnadas, uh, you want to, uh, we were talking uh, Rinpoche before uh, we, you came on, just about uh, the world is in rather precarious shape with the environment, the pandemic, and the polarization of people and tribal views and so on. And uh, Krishnadas and I are a little older than you. We are coming closer to moving on, shall we say? So, Krishna, you, you, why don't you ask? I don't ask remember Rinpoche. exactly what were, what were we talking coming about. Coming back to, uh, what are we coming back to potentially? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Although we just talked about that because even what comes back is not the same thing that left. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. In the in the relative level, everything is changing, impermanence. Um, life is like stock market, go up and down, up and down. So, actually, you know, I wrote the book the last book about my journey in love with the world. And we are thinking about the title about the book. And one title we, are, we thought, dying every day. <laughs> huh. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Because that book is connected with the death and dying impermanence. But yeah. actually we are dying every day. Every day is new. Every day is changing. Right now, the old one is gone. So actually, we think the real death is end of the life. But actually, that is the beginning of new life. <laughs> mm. Death is being born. There's mm. no such thing as ultimate death. Mm. 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 You know... Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Bob, Christian. Robert Thurman is a friend of mine, and he often tells people, there are no dead beings. <laughs> you know, don't, you know, <laughs> you know how he is. There are no dead beings. <laughs> Bodies come and go, no dead beings. <laughs> True. True. <clears throat> yeah. It's hard for people born in the West to truly get a feel for that, you know, truly appreciate that fact. Because like you say, we have so much self-cherishing and we want to control everything. Death uh, is certainly something we can't control. So it's very, very scary yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I almost die. Um, when I'm doing wandering retreat, the first month I got the, I went for baking food and I think food poison. I got the diarrhea, vomiting and diet for five days. Then in the end, I cannot see, I cannot hear, my body become paralyzed. I thought I'm going to die. So we have death and dying practice. So let go, let it be. But then the sense were dissolve. At the same time, the thought dissolve, thought. So now when we think about something, there's an image and there's a name. And then we recognize there's apple, there's a pizza, like that. But that moment, these are all gone. Mm. But then awareness is so present. No front, mm -hmm. back, no up, down, no past, future, no time. I know everything was going on, but there's no 
no kind of like not thinking like now. So I was thinking the example is uh, sometime when we go in the mountain, there's a lake, right? Pristine water lake. And inside lake, entire valley, the mountain, trees, house, whatever, can reflect in the lake. So mind become like that, the awareness. Normally, mm -hmm. when we think, our mind tiny, our mind go there and thinking about things. But now the everything appear. So that is the, I think, the fundamental quality of awareness with us. That is the our basic innate goodness. That is the Buddha nature. And that cannot die, I think. Mm. Mm. If we recognize, if we be with that, of course, if we're not recognized, then we fall, we lost in the cloud, right? But if we recognize that, even the body is dying, I think awareness cannot die. Mm. So no matter what we call, awareness cannot be die. Why? Because it's unborn. Mm. Mm. In order to die, you have to be born first. Yeah. It's not being born how you can die. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Well, Rinpoche, we've uh, taken up uh, a bunch of your time right now. And uh, I, I have a thought during the last hour. One of the things that you said is a beautiful little aphorism. Uh, not okay is okay, you said. This should be a yeah. book for you. This is your next book. <laughs> Not okay is okay. <laughs> yeah, good title. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. Oh, well, thank you so much for, for uh, spending this time with us, Rinpoche. It's a, a beautiful delight for us. And uh, everybody listening, of course, all of Rinpoche's books will be uh, available, linked, so that you can take part as well as uh, Rinpoche's Turgar community. We will link that up as well. And Rinpoche is doing quite regularly um, online courses that you've been doing. And Krishnadas has been taking part as well. And I'm, I've got to look to find a time within my pandemic busy schedule somehow <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, help me! Um, so again, thank you, thank you, thank He's you. He's more busy now than he used to be. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Anyhow, thank you again for being thank on you, on, the, on the podcast and being thank on you. the network. And wonderful uh, to see you. Yes, yeah, love you, you so much. much. Wonderful thank to you. see both of you. Thank and you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We'll see everybody next time. Ram Nam. <laughs>